Welcome to Forbes Talks. Joining me now is Derek Saul, a breaking news reporter here at Forbes. Derek, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me. So Elon Musk has reportedly recently intensified the search for his replacement for Twitter CEO. What can you tell us? Yeah, so it's so funny with with Elon where it's so hard to, you know, to know where there's what, what what's smoke and what's fire. And I think it's definitely true that we will see a new Twitter CEO in coming months. Um, something that's been pointed to recently is he testified in Delaware court in an unrelated, unrelated case to Twitter. But he said, among other things, he said that he frankly didn't want to be CEO of any company, which was funny because he became CEO of Twitter and he's obviously also the CEO of Tesla and SpaceX. So, and then he laid out a timeline there of, he, he said, um, he didn't give a firm timeline, but he said it would be a couple months that he would be in charge at Twitter. But he's also publicly tweeted a lot of weird cryptic things following that poll that I'm sure we'll discuss about uh, people supporting his resignation, but saying things along the lines of like, I don't have a successor picked out, no one can turn the company around. And so there's a lot of confusing things. I think also <laughs> that goes to show of that what Elon Musk is sharing publicly is probably pretty different than what's going on behind the scenes because he definitely is trying to pick a successor. Um, you know, his a, a good phrase, the, uh, a very well followed Tesla analyst, uh, Dan Ives, but he he said Elon needs to refocus on his golden child Tesla, and that's true because if if Elon Musk continues to dedicate all his time and financial resources to Twitter, his it's Tesla's Tesla will continue to go to go poorly and its stock. I mean, it's it's down over 60 percent um, since he first disclosed the stake. And it's you know, it's it's hard to dissect his actions, but it's hard to believe that he's going to continue to let Tesla go down this path. I cannot wait to talk about Tesla, but first let's parse through all of his actions over the weekend, starting with that poll you mentioned. So is this news that he is looking for his replacement in relation to that poll, which the majority of users said that he should step down? Yeah, so yes and no, a quick, quick little backdrop there, but over the weekend, um, he, he had a couple things that were particularly unpopular, including banning some journalists that cover him over some dubious claims of saying that they shared his what amounts to his assassination coordinates by um, retweeting an account that retweeting information related to an account that tracks publicly available information as private chat. And so that was kind of the lead up. And that was, I think, the last straw for certain people that you know maybe were on the fence. And so and what was the response to that? I mean, look, as I think it's hard as as journalists, it's hard to, you know, maybe parse through and see maybe the the, the objective response. But I think it was pretty overwhelmingly negative. Um, you know, the, there were analysts that were not, you know, not happy with it. I mean, it's it, it's it's one thing of, you know, of when he scraps Twitter's PR team like he did at Tesla and, you know, not being friendly to the media and then, you know, of especially he he kind of ran the Twitter platform on this uh, pretext of free speech. And th it was definitely a weird look. And most importantly, and this was definitely more unpopular, was banning links to rival social media platforms, which is just weird. Um, it's weird that you can't, uh, you know, of trying to ban Facebook and Instagram links on Twitter. Um, so with the with the poll, he said he promised to abide by it on Sunday night. It closed Monday morning at 6.20 a.m., had, I think it was um, 17 and a half million votes, and it was 57 and a half percent in favor of his resignation. And then he was weirdly quiet for like 12 hours on Twitter, which is a very short, which is a very long time for him, and basically just didn't address it, which is which is really weird because he's, you know, he, for better or worse, he's always, he's always active and just, you know, he kind of, he went back to, um, you know, commentary on the, the Twitter files and, and things like that. And his only comment on the matter since that poll closed was a suggestion 
from a from a user saying that oh it should only be twitter blue users whose votes count because they have skin in the game because they're paying eight dollars a month or i forget it's, it's slightly different based on where you buy it but which is also you know that's not very democratic that <laughs> maybe um so yeah it'll, it'll be interesting but again i i do think the writing's the writing is on the wall. I, I would be I would be shocked if he's Twitter CEO within the next couple months. But an important thing to point out, he's not just CEO, he owns it. So it's not like there's going to be a CEO that's diametrically opposed to Elon. And um, it's not like he's not going to have a hand in day-to-day -day things. And because Twitter's a private company, it's not protected by, you know, other regulations that public companies would have. Um, and I think an important thing to point out is a lot of people, you know, it's people are upset of being like, okay, like you're going, you know, he's, he's not promoting free speech and silencing critics and opponents, but he doesn't have to, it's a private company. Um, and, you know, it's that the, there aren't. So while, again, while it's, it's definitely polarizing and, and there are also there are a lot of people that are celebrating and you know celebrating what he's doing um but i think what's what's the most interesting thing to see is he obviously has a ton of fans and supporters um and to see a lot of those people you know not not turn on him maybe as as a person but being like look look you, you need to go back to twitter uh i mean or go back to tesla excuse me um <laughs> because that and that's also where, and you know, it, it's hard to know how much he, maybe he cares day to day about Tesla stock performance, but uh, his net worth is down 50% since over the last year, which is unbelievable. Peaked at a little over 320 billion based on our estimates. Um, and now it's at roughly 160 billion. Does um, he care and, about that? Because well, Forbes did say that he was the richest person in the world. As of last week, he fell down those ranks to second richest person, and he's continuing continuing to still lose his net worth. Is there any inclination he cares? So probably um, he. I mean, now now we're getting a little into the nitty gritty of Forbes Forbes social media. But he tweeted once he overtook Jeff Bezos um, last year as the world's richest man i think it was it was roughly around when tesla stock peaked um but he, he tweeted citing the forbes valuation saying like oh i'm going to give you a silver medal next time next time we see each other in person and there was something this is a little inside baseball there's something else of that it was it was a forbes related thing related to his wealth that he you know publicly publicly commented on and uh, i remember covering he like pinned it as his tweet it was it was something related to like uh, it was his yeah so he definitely cares at least a little bit um and um i i'm not sure the exact percentages off are off the top of my head but roughly 60 percent of his wealth is tied up in um tesla stock another roughly 25 percent is um in spacex and spacex is a private company is roughly 125 billion dollar market uh 120 billion dollar valuation um and then the remaining is twitter and then you know other real estate type type holdings um so yeah it, it, it's it's hard to believe that any billionaire you know wants to lose their billions but he's definitely acting in a suboptimal way to <laughs> to maintain to maintain as well because and you see i mean tesla it's down six percent today um it's among the the worst performing stocks in the s p 500 and uh, something i'm looking at um over the next few days is it it might be if it's not the worst it's it's one of the three or four worst performing stocks since he first disclosed a stake in a nine percent stake in Twitter in on April 4th and since he officially took power October 27th um it's completely moving against the market and it's it's essentially because he's he's selling off um billions and billions of dollars worth of Tesla stock and more importantly he's not pay attention he's not paying attention to Tesla as much as he previously was uh, let's talk about this. So his offer to step down as Twitter CEO comes as several investors at Tesla really question 
his commitment to the company. So what's more valuable to him business-wise, Twitter or Tesla? I mean, <laughs> you would think as a as a rational actor, it should be Tesla. I mean, based on based on market cap. I mean, you know, his right now, even after the huge decline, it's still um it still has, Tesla still has a market cap of 440 billion. That's down from I think it was 1.2 trillion at its peak. Um and he bought Twitter for 44 billion, which is 10% of that. And most people say he, including him, say he overpaid by doubles, probably worth 20 or 25 billion. And they're not Twitter, Twitter is not making uh, you know, a fraction of the revenue that that Tesla is. But on the other hand, he's clearly someone that cares a lot about the masses' opinions. Um, I mean, you saw that before he took over Twitter. Um you know he's one of the most popular figures there and you know he he's he's very entrenched in these online communities I mean you saw him with with Dogecoin and you know meme investing and and he definitely you know cares about the public's opinion um and our colleague Alan Onsman had a great piece when um Elon's purchase of Twitter went through and it's you know it's the world's most powerful lobbying mouthpiece that there is you know it's Twitter's obviously hugely influential so but then again, I mean, you would think that <laughs> if you care about lobbying, you need to have something to lobby. And if and you know, if if Tesla con continues to lose, you know, lose value on the market, then maybe that that lobbying isn't isn't as important. So I think that there's definitely a a balance, you know, a balance of power there. But I think he he definitely cares a lot about you know a lot about both. And I mean, you know, historically, it's not. I mean, have alluded to it. It's not like he is, um, he doesn't have one job like the rest of us. It's not like me all of a sudden it's, you know, I'm, I'm working <laughs> my, my nine to five is, is standard, you know, working, working on the floor with breaking news desk. And then all of a sudden I'm serving as Twitter CEO in my meantime, like he, he is someone that always is wearing a lot of different hats. I mean, he says that he's barely sleeping. He's working pretty much 24 seven. He's, you know, he, there's also, Neuralink, the bo the boring company. I mean, there's he always has a lot of ventures going on, but Twitter is definitely extreme. I mean, by by all accounts, it seems like it's a huge, huge majority of his of his focus at this point. Derek, you're really painting a tumultuous picture here of Twitter in the past few months. And he also tweeted Sunday, quote, the question is not finding a CEO, the question is finding a CEO who can keep Twitter alive. Would that CEO have to be less polarizing than he is now? Well, it's funny because Twitter and um, you know a, a lot of social media companies they struggle to turn a profit. So I think keeping Twitter alive also has different definitions. Of it's obviously it's a hugely valuable platform based on how many users have it. But I think um, the latest estimates from um, from Wedbush was that Twitter is going to lose four billion dollars this year. So, and that has been, you know, of Elon has done a lot to cut costs um, to try to improve the bottom line. But then again, I mean, you've seen issues with advertisers. So I think, um, and I think people don't realize just how important advertising revenue is to Twitter before in their last quarter before they went um private i think it, it was something uh, almost 99 percent or something ridiculous um of their revenue comes from advertising and we don't have information on exactly the impact of a lot of advertisers um pulling back some of their activity um but it's they you know it's he's not going to get enough money for if even if there's a million Twitter blue users. I mean, that's that's still a fraction of the that money he'd probably be losing. Yeah, so, definitely drop in the bucket. But let's talk big picture here. Just how yeah. badly is his tenure impacting Twitter's bottom line? So unfortunately, the answer is hard. It's it's hard to say because I mean, with without them having to report certain things to the SEC, and he runs a very very tight ship. Um, I mean, he, you know, he's pretty much his only method of contact to the public is his own Twitter account. Mm -hmm. um, so 
I, you know, it, it's hard, it's hard exactly to say, or, you know, predict multiple years in the future. Um, I'm sure, and not that on a personal level, like layoffs are ever a good thing, but I, I'm, I'm sure certain overhead, overhead costs, um, decreasing that will be very helpful, but until Twitter proves that it's a stable environment for advertisers, I think it's, it's a really bleak, it's a really, really bleak time. Um, and I think, yeah, I mean, until, or, and look, I, I, you know, it could be wrong. Who knows? Maybe Twitter blue is, is a huge success or other revenue streams, but as Twitter, as we know it has, and social media generally, as we know, it is highly reliant on advertising revenue. And if, you know, if there's, if there's changes, if there's changes to that, I mean, that's, that's a really, really brutal blow. So without giving a, a, a too firm answer, but yes, there there definitely needs to be a stabilization of things. Um, and you, you want to, and I think this is, you see this with social media platforms pretty generally, but, um, you know, they want to avoid being political as much as possible or getting, getting weighted into politics. And it's funny, seeing, and I know it's refreshing, a lot of people think it's refreshing, but seeing him trying to address it head on, but, you know, if he's continuing to warm up to one side of the aisle, and if people go through, you know, if there's been a lot of, um, you know, democratic and, and left-wing users um, that are threatening to leave or have left, and, you know, if that's if that's having a noticeable impact, um, you know, it's, it's not good. <laughs> well, let's look to the future then. What do we know about potential replacements? So we don't know much, which is interesting. Um, I mean, it, I'm sure it would be someone that's, um, you know, that the Musk has been associated with in the past. So the report today from CNBC, um, CNBC's David Faber, he declined to name anyone specifically, said it's still very early stages. Um, two names he did rule out, which aren't surprising, um, are Jack Dorsey, who's the billionaire, two-time CEO of Twitter, and who's had kind of a weird friend and foe relationship with with Elon Musk, um, and also John Legere, um, formerly the CEO of T-Mobile. Um, but we saw a lot of Tesla's engineers and employees move over towards Twitter. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's, I'm sure it's someone that has, you know, ties with Elon. I know a name that's been floated out um, is, just looking at the pronunciation there, Jason Calacanis. Um, and he's an investor that's had a close relationship with, with Elon. And in some of the texts that were disclosed and part of Twitter's lawsuit against Musk, um, he mentioned be, having interest in being Twitter CEO. So, I mean, I would put the betting odds on Jason Calacanis, but also at, I could see it being, you know, the, it could be a host of figures. And you never know with Elon Musk, maybe he'll make it like a, maybe he'll make it, um, what's the the Dogecoin dog? Like, a, maybe he'll make it a Shiba Inu. Um, well, Derek Saul, thank you so much for your input.